we are continuing. Uh, I guess you can say like that old engine of the fable story, you know, through the Gospel of Matthew. We think we can, we think we can, we think we can. And so, but slowly, steadily, surely we are chug, 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 chugging our way through the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 26 and verses 40 and 41. Reading from the original Living Bible. Then he returned to the three disciples and found them asleep. Peter recalled, couldn't you keep what, stay awake with me one hour? Keep alert and pray, otherwise temptation and over, will overpower you. For the spirit is indeed willing, but how weak the body is. We can look at this passage and see that there are two things at work in this passage. The first is that the apostles do not get it what is about to transpire. They are completely oblivious to the reality in front of them. The second is that the apostles are tired. These two points are interconnected, of course, in the narrative. It was not just the fact that the apostles were tired that led them to snooze, while Jesus called them to pray. You see, it is connected with the first point. They were able to snooze, for they had no sense of the urgency of the situation. You see, if they knew what was about to happen, they would still be tired, but they would have a reason to fight against it. In fact, we would say that probably the adrenaline would be pumping in the, and keeping them edgy. The problem was therefore not that they were tired, but they were oblivious to the reality of the situation. One of the big steps in the journey of discipleship is learning to pray on a regular basis. In most lives, it can be hard to find the time to set aside for this task. Many try to do it in the morning, for example. It is usually a time of day when one can have a measure of quiet and non-interference. The problem, especially when you are younger, is that you physically want to sleep. Now, most of us, when younger, slept longer than we do when we are older. Is the problem of sleeping when one should be praying simply a product of being young and needing to sleep? Well, it enters in, but a bigger factor is that when you first step out, start out on the journey of prayer, you will not sense its importance. It is, it is not, you see, if it's not all that important, you will fall back to sleeping. Isn't that what the, they did in the Garden of Gethsemane? They would have been praying if they saw the urgency of the situation. You will probably not really fully grasp the importance of prayer until you give it years, and I would say probably decades to it. It is something that only as you do it do you see its importance. And when you understand its importance, then you will not be, as it were, sleeping. The heart of what discipleship is, is to embrace in our physicality the reality of the spiritual dimension. This sounds more complex than it is. You see, it is easy for life, it is easy for life to focus on the here and now. It is easy for life to focus on the perceived needs of our body. Sexual immorality is not practiced or indulged in on the basis of need. Sexual immorality is a reflection of the attitude that the physical takes precedence over the spiritual. You see, in our fallen world, the spiritual dimension has been pushed out of the realm of the everyday life. Discipleship, in one sense, is the attempt to restore to our life the balance that comes from integrating the spiritual dimension into our physical world. This does not happen automatically or easy. It takes work. As the disciples show in the Garden of Gethsemane, it just does not happen. Now, it is interesting to take note of Jesus, that Jesus, though he is frustrated, he does not go ballistic on them. In simple terms, he is Jesus and not me. Jesus is able to even 
to see, even though that the desire is there, that while the follow, he's able to see that the desire is there, even though the follow through is lacking. In other words, this time might be a failure, but progress was being made. The life of discipleship is not mastered through a weekend of advanced discipleship training. Discipleship is mastered through decades of disciplined living. In other words, if we are to take the spiritual dimension of life and the reality of Jesus and the call of discipleship and the life of faith and make it real in our life, we have to learn to discipline ourselves physically because it's not going to just happen naturally. Jesus is saying, I'm not expecting you to get all of it right at the beginning. I understand it takes time. The point is that we must make the resolve to do what is needed to be a disciple. Now, obviously, in this unit, I'm focusing on prayer because that's what the disciples had to learn. And I think for many of us, learning to pray is something that is hard because it fights against our desire, for example, to sleep. The aspiration for this will lead to it in time. In other words, learn to aspire to it and you will do what is needed to achieve it. 